Hey there, ever feel like your big vision for your life is so good and it's also just out of reach? Ever felt that? Hey beautiful human, it's me Rebecca Wiener McGregor, the Anxiety Eraser, back with another episode of Effective Immediately, the show where we talk healthy emotions, self-leadership, abundance, and I give you a mindset shift that you can use Effective Immediately. Okay. You ever felt like your your dream, your big vision that you have for yourself was just stuck on your vision board, was just out of reach? And maybe there was just like some invisible force keeping you from having the things that you want. In today's episode, we're going to really dive into facing the fact that our subconscious mind can be a potential block to our dream, to our vision, to our goal. And it can either fuel your dreams really, or it can create a lot of resistance. So we are going to uh, see if we can unlock some fuel for you, okay? All right, so one of the first things that you need to know, if you don't already, and if you if you do know this already, like you think you know this in your mind, um, but you're still things are still a little out of reach, I just invite you to Pay attention anyway to notice how this might be impacting you. Sometimes we know things, we've learned things, we've read about things, but they haven't created a change in us. So we're still really trying to understand how they can impact us. And that's what I'd like you to do today, just to kind of see how this might be showing up in your life. And also, as always, we're collecting data. So be very kind and gentle with yourself. Don't beat yourself up. And... Um, be loving. Be loving, okay? All right. So, our subconscious mind is the storehouse of every single experience that we've ever had. And whether we remember them consciously or not, everything that almost everything that we have ever experienced is stored. So, all of that information is running 95% of our emotions and behaviors. 95%. Some things that we can't really remember unless we really think about are running the show for us every single day. <clears throat> 95%. Now that number is a big deal and it's why I've been able to do this work for the last 20 years because when we are in the pursuit of a goal, when we are in pursuit of a new vision for ourselves, we want to create a new reality for ourselves, we want to become the next version of ourselves, the subconscious mind will have some influence in that. In fact, a lot of influence. So here's how you might notice that your subconscious mind is fueling you. It's like really supporting your vision, your aspiration, or it is sabotaging you. Okay. There might be persistent procrastination patterns where you are consistently delaying tasks or avoiding taking action on your goals. This could potentially indicate that your subconscious mind is resisting the progress that you want to make. Procrastination can be a very, it's a very common self-sabotaging mechanism to maintain the status quo. Now, this is where it's really, I think it's completely fascinating that we have all of these experiences and all of these emotions running the show for us outside of our conscious mind. So our conscious mind wants things, our spirit wants things, and here we have the subconscious mind operating in the background saying, hmm, well, based on your experiences, I'm not sure that you can have the thing that you want. Now, the subconscious mind really loves the status quo. The subconscious mind really loves predictability. The subconscious mind really loves it when we stay the same really loves it when we do not make much change. It does not care about our happiness. It does not care about our comfort. 
I'm going to say that again. The subconscious mind does not care about your happiness. It does not care about your comfort. It cares about your safety. It cares about things staying the same and predictable and similar. Now you can see how this can be a potential problem when we have big dreams, big goals. We're leaders who want to create big change in the world. We want to create big change in ourselves. We want to create change in our families. We want to create change in our communities. You can see how the subconscious mind might start to react a little bit and get a little scared. And it'll start analyzing the data from all of those experiences that it's stored up. And what will it find in that data? It will find evidence to tell us that we might not be worthy of the thing that we want, right? Maybe we've been hurt or injured or betrayed or someone has treated us some kind of way that made us tell ourselves a subconscious story. It started to tell us that maybe we're not worthy of um, great things. Maybe we're not as special as we thought we were. Maybe we're not very valuable for someone to treat us that way. So there might be a pattern of unworthiness that's lurking in the subconscious mind, telling us we can't have what we want. There may be data there saying, well, you know, your family isn't used to being that successful. Like you'd be the first millionaire in your family. You would be the first person to uh, have a business that was successful in your family. You may be the first person who, you know, um, went to college in your family. And now you think you're going to have a business. Now you think you're going to have great success. You think you're going to be speaking on stages. You think you're going to be making a huge change in this world. Well, I don't know. That's not really, that's not really what your family does. That's not really been anything that has been available to your family. So there might be a, a story that says, well, if I don't come from success, I can't have success. Along with that story, it might be, well, I don't want to outshine my family. I love and respect my family, and I don't want to hurt them by being successful if they can't get there. These are not conscious thoughts. These are things that are happening under the surface in our operating system. That part of us that runs 95% of our emotions and behaviors. There may be a story that says, well, with my family's background being very um, religious and spir or spiritual, I, I can't make money off of those things because um, we really operate from a place of the meek will inherit the earth and um, money is the root of all evil. And so because of my background, I'm not going to let myself be successful because I might become a bad person if I do well helping other people, if I make money helping other people. Ooh, that felt like a, a heavy one for some people. Give yourself a breath there, okay? There may be different stories that you have heard growing up that you could not even remember in this moment, but stories that happened, stories of what happened to your family or to people in your community when they tried to do well, when they tried to build something big and successful. And while it didn't work for them, it fell apart. They were a huge failure, blah, blah, blah. And pretty soon we have a story that says, Ooh, I don't want to get too big for my britches. I don't want to um, try to have success and then have it change me or have it fall apart. That's a big one too, right? Because we can, depending on our history, depending on our experiences, we can have a story that if we make a lot of money, that will change or that will become a big fat failure. And all of those those don't sound fun to our subconscious mind. Those sound scary. 
Those sound potentially embarrassing. They sound painful. They sound, frankly, quite awful, right? They sound not so great to the conscious mind, but to the subconscious mind, if there is any hint of those kind of stories, those things can hold us back. So just kind of take it in a little bit because what you can do when you start to notice these patterns is that you can start to do different techniques and things like that to help your subconscious mind get more comfortable. I've got loads of techniques that I can share with you about that. It's important for you to notice that if you are having these blocks that you don't try to push past them that you don't try to get angry with yourself and try to force your subconscious mind into action or try to force yourself to change, that can create more resistance. The anger that you might have toward yourself, more resistance. The frustration, the beating yourself up might can create more resistance. This is not a... Um, an opportunity for you to start beating yourself up when you notice these patterns are happening. This is not a, an opportunity for you to say, well, my subconscious mind says I can't have what I want, so I'm not gonna go for it. This is actually an opportunity for you to start paying attention to what's happening inside of you, noticing what you're creating in your physical world, notice what blocks might be coming up for you, and then starting to work with them. I am a hypnotist and I've been doing this for 20 years and I help leaders, coaches, and healers to release anxiety and other subconscious resistance to their dreams so that they can have the life that they want, make the impact that they want, live the experiences that they want. So it is possible to shift. So be very gentle with yourself as you're noticing these patterns because these are clues for you. This is actually good news. If the dream feels way off in the distance and you're noticing that some of these stories might be yours, some of these patterns might be yours, this is actually good news because we can make the shifts for you. Every single experience that you have had in your life fuels how you react today. You're not just fresh in this moment having an experience and operating from what you know right now. Your subconscious mind is operating in the background, trying to match your current experience to a similar experience that you've had in the past. And when it does that, it will actually have you respond the way that you did in the past as well. Kind of tricky, right? Have you ever felt like something made you really angry or frustrated and you look back at that experience and you might think, well, that was kind of an immature response. Why did I, I mean, it felt like maybe way out of character for you to respond the way you did. That means, and that's because you are operating off of an experience that happened in the past, not this present moment. So if you're running a certain pattern with anxiety, for example, or anger or frustration or resentment, and every time something comes up there, the, the response that you have seems just a little over the top or a little much, or why did this feeling come out of nowhere? Or why did I respond that way when I didn't mean to? That speaks volumes about where that the um, pattern is coming from. Most of our subconscious patterns were set in place before we were three years old. And then another batch before we were eight years old and maybe even into our early teens, but most of them before we were eight years old. And then any trauma, any betrayal, any pain that we've experienced can add to those experiences after the fact. So you're not running off of just today, right? or you would probably have your entire vision board created. You would have it created in your real life. That's why we have to do things like vision boards to help lead us, help remind us, help keep us focused and intentional about the things that we want because our subconscious mind is constantly 
trying to keep us the same. Give yourself a breath. Little bits of growth, little tiny shifts that you are noticing. You're noticing that you want to make a shift. You're noticing that you want to make a change. Big changes, if you're noticing they're really scary to your body, start making the little ones. Start making the tinier shifts. Get yourself to do an action that you were previously scared of doing. That will begin to make a shift for you. Get yourself support that you were previously afraid of getting. Sometimes our subconscious mind will even help, even talk us out of getting support or help or a coach or hypnotist or something like that because it knows that this will be a changing thing in your life. That this experience will move you. So if you've ever thought about working with someone, taking a particular class or course, or working with someone like me who can help you release resistance to your dream, you might have all these stories coming up about why you can't do it why it's not the right time, why it's not a um, good investment, why, oh, it might just, it just might not work for you. All of those stories even come from your past experiences. There's no judgment. This is how the mind works. This is how it tries to trick us out of having everything that we want because it loves the status quo. It loves keeping us in the same place. Okay, so another way that you might notice that this is showing up in your life is that there's persistent self-doubt. If you find yourself constantly questioning your abilities, doubting your potential for success, this can be a sign of stored subconscious beliefs. Once again, going back to those beliefs that were stored in there before you were probably age eight years old things that you've witnessed in your family, things that you have seen in movies and on television and on the news, things that you've heard about in your community, things that you heard your parents talking about or your grandparents talking about or their friends around the table and you just happen to be in the room hearing those stories. All of that is stored. All of that data is stored and then it is added on and strengthened by the experiences that you have. So every time you have an experience telling you just, just a little bit that maybe you're just not quite worthy of the thing that you want, or maybe it's just supposed to be a little bit harder for you, or maybe you just can't quite be as wealthy or powerful or emotionally powerful or emotional fr emotionally free as you want, because there's this evidence in the past that says you can't have it the way that you want it. Remember, the subconscious mind is the storehouse of everything. It's running 95% of your behaviors. 95% of your beliefs. Another pattern might be that there are repeated patterns of failure. And in my book, failure is not a bad thing. It is a place to go for lessons. It is something to acknowledge. It is something to look at, to learn about where you are and what you've been doing and what you are believing, what you want to create for yourself, what the, these, the gap might be between your desire and actually having the thing come to fruition. So failure is about lessons, okay? And when you can find a lesson then you actually get to focus on that and not the fact that it was a failure, okay? Being in a state of reflection and curiosity about why the thing hasn't happened the way that you want is a really beneficial place to go. It can be painful. I mean, who wants to take a step back and look at the patterns that didn't work? right? It's way more fun to look at the times that we won and that everything went well and try to use that information to move forward. That information is valid too, 
But if you're noticing a pattern of, I keep trying, I keep trying, I keep trying, and you're not getting where you want to get, that's an opportunity for you to use that information as data. Look at what you might be believing about yourself, what you might be believing about success, what you might be believing about your ability to have success and to maintain success, your ability to have money and hold money, your ability to keep up with your success, your ability to keep up with your growth. And then there's always that underlying fear of change, fear of success. Doesn't make sense. How could we possibly fear success? But as we were talking about earlier, all of our experiences in our lives are telling us, can we have success? First of all, can we have it? Can we have the thing that we want? The other thing is, can we manage the success that comes our way? Some people think, okay, I'm going to run this big company. I'm going to get a big team. I'm going to pull it all together. I'm going to have the success that I want because they've seen other people do it and that just feels right to them and it feels like the mission for them and something will not let them get over the hump. Something about this dream, something about this vision is not working. And here is that little fear of success. That little fear of success that can push us back, hold us back, keep us in the same place because it doesn't trust that we will be able to handle success. Because what's worse than not getting success at all, getting it, getting really successful, and then losing that success? That is terrifying for our subconscious mind. The other piece that is so important here is that the subconscious mind will have all that data and we'll have beliefs set up about if we get successful, who will we become? Will we lose our compassion? Will we lose our kindness? Will we lose our generosity? And the media supports this, right? All the movies with all the very wealthy, bad people and all the stories that you can hear, the little slivers of, of characteristics that they weave into the different characters in the movie. All of that supports the fact that when you get wealthy, that you might change. So the subconscious mind may block wealth, may block great success, may even block great joy because who will you become? Who will you become with money? Who will you become with success? The subconscious mind can fear that. So not only that you might have success and lose everything, but also you might become a bad person. These are things that I work with every day, these underlying patterns that you can't have the way, you can't have things the way that you want them because there are some stories in your past, some beliefs that have grown in your past that tell you you can't have it the way you want it because it's not safe. You won't be good. You won't be safe. Things will fall apart. You won't be able to handle the success. Your family will fall apart. You'll outshine your family. You'll you make people uncomfortable with your success, that kind of thing. There are, there are a few more, but those are the big heavy hitters. And simply right there, just so obvious is, what if I try really hard and I don't get it? What if I have to try really hard for a long time? Maybe it's just not even worth taking the step. And you also, another sign that you are blocking your success subconsciously, that your success is being blocked by your subconscious, is that there's a pattern of negative self-talk where you consistently criticize yourself, consistently belittle yourself. You undermine your self-worth. You hold yourself um, down. You put yourself down as you are in the pursuit of progress. So if you're noticing these things in your life, be very gentle, be very loving, because again, pushing, being angry, feeling massive resistance to yourself, that is not going to help. It's being gentle with yourself, noticing the patterns, and then allowing yourself to make shifts, take actions, and move forward. 
Okay, so here is your effective immediately moment of the week, okay? I want you to take, a, this week is just a little bit of an assessment. Think about what you are trying to create in your life. Think about a goal that you have, whether it is an emotional goal, um, a goal that you are wanting to create some change in your emotional patterns. Maybe you're dealing with anxiety, depression, anger, stuckness, and maybe there are um, other goals that you're trying to achieve, expanding your business, um, deepening your connection with your, with your spouse, your partner. Um, maybe you are really trying to get your business to another level. I want you to be very, very loving and just do a little assessment. Am I taking the actions that I want to take? Yes or no? And what do I think is hindering my progress? Is it what's happening now? Or is it the beliefs that I've created based on my past experiences? What am I doing in my life right now? How am I behaving? Is it, beha is it the behavior that matches my goal? Or is it behaviors and beliefs that match staying the same? Because remember, our subconscious mind really loves it when we stay the same. It really thinks that that is the key to our safety. It doesn't care about our happiness. It doesn't care about our comfort. It's our spirit that is pulling us forward, desiring so much more for us. And I can help you work with both. So I help you unlock that resistance, the anxiety and the subconscious resistance so that you can have your dream. You can have your vision. You can have your amazing business. You can have your amazing impact. You can have that income that you desire and you can have the relationships of your dreams. Get them off your vision board and into your actual life in a very short amount of time. So give yourself some time to do this assessment. It doesn't take very long. You've been probably doing it while we've been talking today. It may be beneficial for you to walk back through this video and just kind of pay attention with curiosity, with collecting data for some of the things that I mentioned. And then I would love to help you have a conversation with you about how we can help you achieve your dreams faster by, create, by releasing that resistance to your dream and creating a simple pathway in your mind to create the beliefs that you need to have what you want. You can find me at RebeccaWiener.com or you can book a call with me directly at callwithrebecca.com. Be so loving with yourself, be so kind, and I'll see you next week. Bye for now.